Okay, my name is Harvey Bailey. I've been interested in photography since the 60s when there was only Polaroids. I thought that was the greatest thing I ever seen because it was instant photography. So, you know, I was in school, I was uh, out of high school, in college, and I bought a Polaroid. I liked it for the fact that you could take, have instant pictures. Plus you could do artsy type of things. I'm saying that and not saying something. I was doing artsy type of stuff with that Polaroid. And after a while, I got kind of complacent with it. And what I did is, I just went ahead and got me a SLR. First one was a Ryko. Regular was probably a 40, 40 millimeter lens. Just real basic, real basic stuff. Uh, my name is Gene Butcher, and you can go to genebutcher.com. That's where I have the majority of my work up at. My particular style, I believe, is uh, definitely concert, live concert and action sports, BMX, skateboarding, uh, snowboarding, stuff like that. I think in the very beginning when I was starting, to, starting out in photography, I was very young, and Robert Frank, who's a famous photographer, he put out a book you know, a long time ago. I think he was really kind of my inspiration. It was more like snapshot, kind of like more candid stuff. And, uh, and then after a while, I just kind of developed my own style, which is kind of isolate the subject and black everything out behind the subject. So it's really, instead of having a bunch of background noise and things behind a subject, I just pretty much remove all the stuff behind them. Uh, my name is James Brown. I've been in photography. I used a point and shoot for about five years. I've had this DSLR doing photography seriously for about two and a half. I got into photography to do portrait photography. For the last couple of years, I've been doing mostly street photography and event photography. I like recording moments. Uh, I like documenting what went on in life. Uh, I think my biggest thrill with photography is recording moments that people don't realize happened and showing it back to them. For one, I do, what got me into photography was actually doing slideshows for my little point and shoot cameras. So now I do a lot of slideshows just to like promote how things in the city aren't as bad as they seem. And I'm really trying to document like Detroit as it turns around. I was one of these type of guys. I would buy photo books. I would study film in the library and I would buy magazines. I'm a big fan of going in a magazine store. And my interest, I read what I'm interested in. So as I research more and more and start putting things together, what type of lens I want, what type of camera I want, you know, I kind of got it on my own. And that's when I really went into school to start studying film. And I thought it was so cool to have a, a telephoto lens on your shoulder, you know what I'm saying? and be at events, and I was serious about taking pictures. You know, I used to do uh, a lot of things with a camera and play with them. You know, take it, have a, you know, you have things out of focus in your background and everything's tight in the foreground. I used to love stuff like that. You couldn't tell me anything. That's why I would do the boat races, ball games, and I liked it. I think some of my, some of my favorite memories of shooting is just, um, you know, kind of like the, Grew up in the 80s, you know, like during the whole punk thing. And I think we're all products like the Reagan administration where, you know, all the moms had to go to work and kind of left our, us kids our own devices, latchkey kids and all that stuff. It was really like the first generation of kids that were staying home alone. So when you're 13, 14 years old and you got a skateboard, a bunch of friends that skateboard, you're into punk music, you got a camera, you tend to do a lot of <laughs> that stuff that your parents don't know about. I think some of my favorite memories are just hanging out with my friends on ramps when we were kids and just listening to punk and doing stupid stuff, taking pictures of it. My number one piece of advice I tell everyone I meet who's trying to get into photography or has been in photography and they just can't break through like the wall or kind of hit a ceiling, they just can't seem to press their art any farther. I see you just gotta keep shooting. Shoot, you know, back when I was shooting on film, I'd shoot like five or six bowls of 36 a day of just my friends skateboarding. And I had like fish bowls full of film and I kept to save up money to get some of that stuff developed. But I was shooting nonstop. And I think just shooting nonstop and then getting your pictures back and people would critique my stuff, like my friends would say, that's, that sucks, that's horrible. So I'd be like, okay, well, I'll change it next time. I'll try to get this angle and that angle. And so I think it's just honest critiques and just shoot as much as you can. That's the only way you're gonna get good. That's the only way you develop your eye. 
Well, on my personal YouTube channel, I have done, because I'm only a still photographer, I have done several slideshows showing the good side uh, and the bad side of Detroit. Uh, I would love to work with someone who wanted to do something like that. It's a lot of places in Detroit, like I'm going to shoot at the Leland House in a few weeks. I didn't realize they knew about that place and a lot of the things that are going on here with the blight and the turning around all over the world. I didn't realize it was that big of a deal, but yeah, I would love to be able to show how good, you know, how great the city is coming along. I th the people and the way they're keeping down the downtown area and hopefully it spreads all around, but the way that the downtown area is safer to go in now. I shoot out at Belle Isle. It's safer than it's ever been to shoot out there because there were times I would never be out there past, you know, certain times of night. But pretty much uh, it's clean. It's, you know, a lot, just a lot of things that are going on in the city. When you go out and shoot street photography, you can see it in the people's faces. So that's cool. Unfortunately, there are some other things you got to take pictures of, but it's good. Uh, I think that everybody, no, I think that anybody who really wants or say they want to give back to the community in some way with their photography, I think that they should make a concentrated effort to do that. Because uh, I've heard a lot of photographers say that they want to do that, but there's been opportunities and sometimes, like there's, there's a lot going on that people could volunteer their time for. Uh, there's a lot of people in the city doing a lot of good things that they don't have any coverage for it. You know, and people like us on a grassroots level could uh, really make a difference. Do it because you love it to help you get through the rough times and uh, take, take everything you learn with a grain of salt. Learn the rules, learn them good, don't argue with people about them, learn them, but always keep in the back of your mind that some of the things are going to be for you and some aren't. So stay original. Actually, you know, when it comes to that, I'm, I can see things that many people can't see. You know, you know, you can kind of see, know how things are coming. Well, I can see, I can see a, a tight shot just looking through that arch right there. But I'd be focused on that bridge, but it's the way I would shoot it, that the bridge would stand out more because I'm trying to get a shot of that bridge, but going through that arch, you know, you do something and it makes it artsy. You know, that, that was my thing about trying to be a shutterbug. I was trying to get some out of it. I did some great stuff. Well, I got some shots to show you. And I'll tell you, my satisfaction was getting something out of what I was trying to take a picture of. Because so many people would see something and say, nice picture. But I would bring it back to say, listen, this is what I was trying to do. Look at that. And when you point out what you're trying to do, they say, oh, I get it. And I learned that, you know, you know when you're a movie buff and you see things, I could see something in a movie that many people wouldn't see. But you know, you, you, pick, you know, you pick certain things out of the movie. My thing was trying to find something with another picture because photographs tell stories. I always, any recommendations for camera, I always tell people to start with 35 millimeter because there's no, there's no questions with 35 millimeter film. You shoot the picture, you can't look at it, you can't edit it from your phone or your back of your camera. Just take six months and shoot 35 millimeter only and see where you get. And then if you want to transition into digital, do digital, but do all manual control. Don't let, don't put your camera on automatic. You'll never learn anything. Like I tell my son, you know, to get your feet wet, you gotta grow. You know, you, you can have an inexpensive camera, play around with it, get used to it. Once you learn the lenses and how to adjust them, even though things are digital now, you know, it's good sometimes if you're really into this to go back to that single lens reflex and learn how to adjust the aperture to do different things, to play with the lenses, to see the effects you get. Because I can take, I can take five shots with five different lenses and it's a different effect in every lens. And so researching it and using it, knowing what you're doing is going to make you a better whatever you want to be in that particular field. As an artist, you see a lot. But because street photography requires the cooperation of people, you don't always get to shoot. So 